hi guys welcome to my channel today on love life and relationships we have nadia on the line nadia how are you i'm fantastic how are you amazing as always thank you for joining our show today glad to be here all righty nadia so let's get right into it so we were talking about the games that people play in relationships and love and in life yes men and women are totally different totally different you know that saying, <clears throat> what is it? Uh, women are from Venus and men are from Mars. Mm -hmm. That is so, so true. Two different people, two different conversations, two different thought processes. Yes, ma'am. It's, it's so crazy, but it's so different. Yes, ma'am. So what are your thoughts on that? It baffles me because I don't know how women and men really exist with one another, to be honest. <laughs> it's like someone's always lying or hiding because it, it, we're so different and there's always a lack of understanding people will not admit that but it, it truly is it's a lack of understanding so it's like they can't live with them can't live without them thing yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta love them yeah so men and women different when it come differ when it comes to love and yeah. so women are more maybe nurturing when it comes to love and men are maybe well there are some nurturing men so I'm, we're not going to say that but men some men are i treat you this way so you should know that i love you yes yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so that's something that me and my husband go through mm -hmm. we are he feels as though I, he doesn't like questions he feels as though because he treats me a certain way that I should automatically know the answer to the questions of, I should never doubt him because of the way he treats me. If I ask him a simple question, he gets very upset because I'm doubting his love for me. And I'm like, no, I just want to know. It's a question. And he hates when I say, it's just a question. Because to him, it's not just a question. To him, it's assassinating his character. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> so it sounds like that's not something you're used to. No, I got a tiptoe. Like, I want to be able to ask whatever I want to ask. I don't want to have to be like, okay, well, I'm just not going to ask him because he's going to get upset. So did you know that about him before you got married? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and yet you still married him? Quality, so I definitely still marry him um, with that as being a problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, so you you don't feel like that's nothing you can't get around. I, okay, I can't get around. It, it's me. <laughs> if I mature up and, and be uh, kind and okay, yeah, yeah I, we can get around it, but I, sometimes I can't do that. I'll keep it real. So, how does he react when that happens? Oh, he it's the end of the world. <laughs> he don't want to be around me. I'm doubting his love. I'm doubting him. I'm just tearing him to pieces. It, 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 just, it just breaks his heart to, to the core. He can't take it. And then we don't be beef for about two days. <laughs> I'm like, this is a question. I'm just asking you a question. So, are you more vocal with him when it comes to, like, your love and how you feel about love? I am. I am. I'm, because he's very, he started off being very vocal, vocal with me first. And at first it was like, it was a lot for me because I was a used to that. I came from a relationship of 21 years where that wasn't it. I never heard the vocal parts of it too much. And he, he was a man of action and action only. And he wasn't even um, emotional or anything like that. So I come from him to this person that I'm with now who is very emotional, very <laughs> communicates a lot. So he's very open, he's very verbal and he'll say if he'll say whatever's on his mind. And um it was a little overwhelming at first because I didn't know how to I wasn't used to it. Right. But um so that made me all kind of completely like open up to him too. Well, it kind of almost seems like that don't match. Being as though if he's very open and very vocal, then you asking him a question shouldn't set him off. He has triggers. 
Okay. He has triggers because he's he did 13 years in prison. Okay, okay. So his triggers come from prison. Right. So how do you display your love for him? Um, by taking care of him. And I, by taking care of him, I mean by I cook, I clean, I um, make sure that he's good for work. I take care of all the business in the house. I tell him I love him. I kiss them, I hug them, and that, you know, nighttime is our favorite time because I just love to be in bed with them and we talk. Right. I love that too when I'm in a relationship talking, the hugging, the kissing, the. I'm kind of clingy, so. <laughs> I tell everybody, I'm kind of clingy, so, you know, I'm a, um, I like being all up on them. And so I like the way they smell. I like just yeah, the way they feel. Smells very good. Yeah, so when I'm with my person, I like the way, you know, just being close to them feels. And I'm very vocal when it comes to, you know, I love you and how I feel and I know how to communicate properly. So I'm normally saying I love you and because when I'm in love, I'm in love. And I love in a way different type of way than, you know, you know me a little bit. So, you know, I'll be, you know, loving on a nigga. Um <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll be loving them. I'll be, I'll be stroking that ego a lot. I'll be making them real, real rotten. Um, <laughs> but I can't help it. That's like the way I, I think they should feel a certain type of way. And so that's what I want to put into them. I love when a man just comes up and hugs you. Yes, that's amazing. It is. And it feels nice, especially when you can lay it your head on their great. chest. Yes, it feels great. I love that too. But I've been with a couple guys that me hugging them, like, you know, just walking up to them and hugging them sometimes, it almost kind of throws them off, almost like their mom didn't hug them or something. Probably. <laughs> so it's like they don't know how to. So I kind of do it more when I realize that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, show them that you're there. And that might yeah, be a little but... bit while well, I'm a little bit clingy with certain ones. Here with, with the um, mama dramas. <laughs> Is that like the mama's boy version or the mama didn't love you version? Yeah, mama didn't, you know, didn't, didn't love or show them no love. And it's like, it's affecting so many of our black men. It's, it's sad. Well, I think it's affecting a lot of men, period. Not just black. I think that it's a, a thing because I'm learning even interracially, some of them don't get the kind of nurturing that they should get from a mom. Speaking of that, I've spoken to about three black women who told me they're never going back to black men again. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Well, what was that about? They said because black, white men really take care of them. They take care of their needs. They take care of their wants. I mean, they don't have to have a fake fat butt. They have a the little skinny, flat, flat ass roller. Wow. The they love it. <laughs> They cater to them. They make sure they're good. And I, I promise you, I've been hearing this so often. And I'm just like, wow, that's really deep for you to say that. I'm like, never. It's like, never. I'm done with black men until they learn to step up. <laughs> wow. Well, okay. Isn't that deep? That's very deep because, one, for me, I've never actually dated outside of my race. But honestly, lately... Um, it's been a thought because single celibate and sober, but what I've been saying is that my, I think my next relationship, my next, next marriage, my next is going to be with somebody that is not black. So I've been saying the same exact thing, which is weird, but that's just the feeling that I have. And they could, I don't know. It's just, I have that feeling. And it's not because I don't like black men. I love a black man, okay? And I love a crispy-ass black man. So don't get it fucked up. But something in me is saying, like, lately it's been a lot of, like, white men, definitely. A lot of Spanish men. A lot of just foreign type of men that have been more on the the approach side. Even when I'm at work and out for work, those are the ones that come and help me. And they are very friendly, like they're saying. I don't know how it is dating them. I definitely don't know how it is having sex with them. But 
I mean, I'm not opposed and I'm very much open because I think that love comes from wherever love comes from. Right. So I, I, I wouldn't go as far as to say I would never date a black man. If he comes along and he's black and we hit it off and God says, I'm going to release you into the arms of that man, then I'm going to love him. I'm going to love my black king and keep it pushing. But if I end up with a white king <laughs> or Arabic king or <laughs> the, however, uh, whatever they come, Spanish king, however they come, I'm going a, I'm to a do the same exact thing and I'm going to, you know, spoil them rotten and I'm going to stroke that ego and, you know, all the good shit. I just want him to come the way I like it, though. A white king don't sound right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm crying. Why not? It sounds white king. No, it sounds like... Uh, for me, I think my problem was why I never dealt with a white man and I never was open to it because I automatically think about slavery. And I know that I probably shouldn't be thinking like that. <laughs> and all my cousins that have children by white women, as soon as they get mad, the first thing they do is call them a nigger. So I feel like, hmm, are we ever going to be, you know, I don't know. Weird. Well, remember George Jefferson and Tom Willis. He used to call him a honky. <laughs> he never called him a nigger, but he definitely used to call him a honky, and they were best friends. So I think you can kind of, you know, <laughs> oh, I'm cracking up. But either way, now hold on though, because I done seen some white men that give some of these black men a run for their money. Especially like with the swag, because one thing about me, I, I love me a black man. But I have seen some white men that come with flavor. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I be thinking like, hold on now. No, that's different. <laughs> the beard, the height, the smile, the, the dress, the everything. Yes. I, yeah, they're around. So, you know, my, I got requirements, you know, a couple of requirements because I told you I asked God to do it. You know, to bring me my spouse, bring me my partner, bring me my person. And I didn't ask for anything. I said, God, bring me what I needed. And then I had to revise that. <laughs> Remember, I told you I had to revise that. Yeah. Because I could get what I needed and not be attracted to it. And it's not what I want. Or I can get what I want and he don't have what I need. So I need what I want and what I need all rolled into one thing. And I need God to make it good. <laughs> make it taste good. <laughs> I need them to bring that flavor for me. Yeah, I need them to make it taste good. Like when I look at this man, I need them to look like look. <laughs> like let me maybe have to wipe my lips out and slobber or something. Like damn, this he fine. So wait, so you think if you have somebody too fine, they can turn into infatuation? No, I said I need both rolled into one. The thing that I want and the thing that I need, I need it to be a complete ass package. Not just infatuation. I need it to be the love. I need it to be the caring. I need it to be the nurturing. I need us to be friends. I need us to be friendly. Right. I need all those things. So it can't just be fine and stupid or fine and just not taking care of nothing. You just fine and lazy. Did that. Wrote a book about it. Don't want it again. Um... <laughs> No, thank you. No, ma'am. No, sir. No way, Jose. I'm not with it. I'm willing to work with somebody, definitely. So he don't even have to come, like, fully, whatever, because at the end of the day, when you work together and you grow, I'm willing to grow with someone. Right. But don't come talking to me when you, you know, just, just un qualified <laughs> in so many different ways oh, because i'm not a science so, project so if you had a man that so care of your needs and everything right when he just was not attractive and he was not tall it would still be a no it's a no for me motherfucker <laughs> all the way a no i'm not doing it i'm not like Listen, and, and me and you had the conversation because I, I dated outside of my spectrum before. You already know who it was. And I chose 
a person that was nothing like, or I thought was nothing like anybody or anything I've ever dated. The man had on tidy whities honey. Um, he was a little older. First penis I ever saw that was uncircumcised. Um, I didn't like that. Uh, it was a lot of things about this person that I didn't like. I thought I could work with only because you know you can change all those things. Like you can definitely change a person's. Uh, you know you can get circumcised at a young age or um, I mean at an older age. There's a couple things we can deal with, but yeah, I'm not settling no more. It's just is what it is. It, it, there's a height requirement for this ride. I like tall. Um, it don't have to be a, a race, color, or creed. But it has to be some attraction. It's nothing like looking up into a tall nigga's arm. Or when he hugs you to his chest. Like, you know what I mean? Yes. You want to feel secure and safe. And yes, ma'am. 